Okay, it's me again. Um, just doing a follow-up video to my, my earlier video about the currenter of the emitter. Um, I, I don't want you blowing yourself up or cooking your emitter or trying to reproduce my results, so I think it's important that I, I demonstrate something else, which is uh, the method I'm using to take the current draw. Um, I know a lot of pe people out there are not doing this, and, and uh, probably also why they're frustrated about not being able to measure um, 9 amps of current draw from, from the SST 90 emitter uh, when fed properly. And you know, here's the, here's the recipe for my success. Besides the fact that every contact point in this torch has been treated with deoxid, and uh, you know, very heavy gauge copper wire was used, um, it's it's also it's also the method of measurement. And uh, let me explain what I mean by that. The the leads on this DMM, um, for example, right here are 16 gauge stranded copper speaker wire, uh, soldered to gold plated banana plugs, treated with deoxid, um, gold tips. I mean, this is all very also very low resistance. Let me, let me show you how even that is not enough. Um, here's, here's the battery pack fully charged to 4.2 to 1 volts. Okay, so that's a max volt charge there. And using a conventional method of measuring current draw at the tail cap, you can see that I'm still not getting using this method that everybody else uses pretty much the the kind of pull that you would expect to see from even this low resistance setup on a parallel pack uh, I mean there we're not even quite getting to 8 amps alright 8 amps as it's heating up okay I uh, remember before I was measuring over 12 amps on, on a 4.0 or 4.1 charge pack this is a 4.2 charge pack and I'm having a hard time with 8 I'm going to use the same lead now with the clamp meter through first, zero it again, okay, zero on the clamp there, and I'm going to hold the same lead that I was just using before in place again, I don't know if I can do this so you can see it, I'm going to try, maybe I'll have to take my word for it, um, this, I mean this should yield even better results than, than what I was just showing you with the, the inline meter, um, how can I do this, there we go. But I think that what, what, what this is going to demonstrate is that even this 16 gauge strand of copper is not going to provide the low resistance that is required to reproduce the results I was getting before. Now you can see that I am pulling more current now, right? It's heating up and I'm getting up to 9.4. I don't know if you can read that. Using the clamp meter and the, uh, wow, I can actually feel the heat in my leg from the LED. It's amazing. Um, from the plant meter and the 16 gauge strand of copper. Now watch what happens. And this is why I did it this way the first time. Watch what happens when I move to the, the sheet metal, which is much lower resistance than the, the strand of copper. Okay. Over 10 amps. Going for 11. 11 amps. Heating up, heating up. Probably gonna hit 12. Okay. Now tonight, the LED hasn't been overstressed and overheated, so we're on a 4.2 pack. We're not quite topping 12 amps yet, and it's not turning blue yet either, which is nice. This turns blue about 13 amps, because uh, at that point the heatsink just can't pull the heat away from it fast enough. And hell, 11's way over spec. But the the, the point I wanted to make was that. Um, when your torch is fully assembled and you've got it all done low resistance, um, like this, you know, this deoxid treated spring tail cap combo, um, you, you, there, there's not the resistance that there is with with a, a 16 gauge wire. You know, even through a, measured through a clamp meter, you're going to get a lot more current pull. So you might only be measuring, um, you know, five or six amps on your inline DMM with your leads that are probably not as beefy as mine. Uh, but in actuality, when you close the torch up and, and the spring is pushing hard against the contacts.